Hi everyone, welcome to Speakers TV. I've got two really wonderful guests to speak to today. Um, and we'll be talking about Peace of Phobia, the performance, uh, the project, the idea, um, and what went into it with Iram, who is the co-director of the play and uh, also co-founder of Speakers Corner and Imam Bilali from Bradford Grand Mosque. Welcome both of you. Uh, it's great to speak to you. Um, I want to first uh, ask Iram, tell us about Peace of Phobia, where it came from and what you hope uh, it will do. So Peace of Phobia was an idea I came up with um, around two years ago. Um, it was actually at a Commonwealth R&D session. An R&D session is just a little get together that occurs just before the planning stages of a of a play and we were all sat down and at that time a few matters were discussed so like radical acts and things that were going on at the time and the main thing that really striked me as a young Muslim woman was a Punisher Muslim day and because of the impact that had um, on the the youth and also the on Bradfordians who were actually scared to to go out on on the day um, we decided to start a project um, and we thought peace of um, Islam means peace and how could you possibly have a phobia of peace so that's where the name peace of phobia comes from um, and then after that I feel like it, it's just crazy to look back because we just we started uh, planning different events but the main event we had was um, a car show in City Park and that brought together so many people and the passion that we saw and the unity of people not just Muslims but the whole it seemed like the whole of Bradford had had come to City Park on that day and it was just an amazing day um, so from there we decided to actually carry on um, carry on with the project and we, we came up with Peace of Phobia the play and um, we thought why not get the why not get the lads involved in a way where they can express themselves in in a manner that reaches out not just people from Bradford but a, a wider sp um, spectrum of, of audiences so um, we came up with the Peace of Phobia play and we've just been planning sessions and Peace of Phobia itself the play is around three young men, three young Muslim men who um, who who are different and who want to just put portray their, their lifestyle and show that they are normal. Um, and I feel like that is a huge thing at the moment because a lot of young people are struggling with their identity and how to express themselves as young Muslims. Um, so yeah, that, that's what Peace of Phobia is and that, that's where the idea came about. I hope that answered that question. It does perfectly. Thank you so much, Aram. Um, and I wanted to bring in Imam Bilali. So you work as an Imam in Bradford, one of the youngest cities outside of London, um, huge uh, Muslim population in, in particular. What's your day-to-day -day work um, as, a, as an Imam? Traditionally, thank you for inviting me onto the show. Uh, traditionally, uh, an Imam is um, a spiritual and a religious leader of the local or of its Muslim community um, and they have a diverse set of um, tasks and duties that they normally that they normally have so including they, they, they'll be the the go-to for clear Islamic uh, instruction um, they'll be also the one who leads the Muslim community in prayer um, and then fulfilling the other needs of the community as well, the day-to-day -day needs. So whether it be conducting a wedding ceremony, uh, a funeral ceremony. Uh, and also you'll find that normally they take the lead um, in dealing with the interfaith communities as well. Um, and sometimes we have to do a bit of counselling as well, uh, from time to time as well. So it's quite quite a diverse um, set of duties that you know imams get up to, yeah. um, particularly in the modern day very varied um, and I can imagine that you work with and see all aspects of, of Muslim communities in, in Bradford. Um, I want to particularly ask about young people. How do you interact with young people and how do young people generally interact with faith in, in your experience? I think the passion and attraction is always there, um, particularly when it comes to the youth. Um, sometimes the only thing that's lacking is a little bit of guidance. Um, my personal interactions with youth is that because I'm, I'm also a teacher um, and I teach the key stage four age, so the teenage age um, at the mosque. So we instill the idea of hidmat e khalq, which is a service of the creation, which is something which is a, a core uh, principle and value within Islam. So they get that kind of training um, and they get exposed to that from a very young age. Uh, so then it's just like an automatic process um, that even when they graduate from the mosque studies, you'll find that there's never a time when there's uh, a shortage of young hands 
and in fact the bulk of the services at the mosque are probably delivered um, by the young volunteers um, particularly over the past year and a half as well um, where I would say there's been an increase um, in fact I would say many of them have come of age um, you know in helping us deliver safe a COVID safe uh, environment within the masjid mm. and that's been a huge huge challenge and I think that at this moment in time we're seeing lots more young people across society becoming more in tune with maybe their religious identity um, what they grew up with as, as, as young people um, how do you think young people interact with uh, with being Muslim in in a society like like the one that we find ourselves in in Britain um, I think the guidance is clear from the from from the Quran and Sunnah uh, in terms of how what are the requirements for us to in, in, in our interactions with whether they be other Muslims whether they be the non-Muslims so as long as they get that firm grounding that guidance from an early age um, I don't see it being as something that they would find difficult but again I think education is key um, and if they get that education um, then you know there's a lot that the young can achieve and are achieving obviously uh, peace for you being uh, a perfect example of that um, and, and Iram as, as well, I wanted to, to pick up on some of the themes that Peaceophobia covers. So we have cars and, and car culture, something which if you, if you stand on a random road in Bradford, you know, you'll see so many different cars uh, g going past. But then also, you know, you, you talked about Islamophobia and Punisher Muslim Day. Um, you know, the, the, the comments of Boris Johnson, the current prime minister, you know, back uh, when, when he wrote an article um, about Muslim women who wear, who wear the niqab. So there's lots of uh, things that are out there um, that kind of shape how young Muslims see their identity. So I think faith is something that is quite intrinsic, but what about identity more widely? In, in uh, How do Muslims see themselves in society? Do, Iram and, and Imam? Go I ahead. feel like um, I'm, I'm 20 years old myself. And when I started volunteering, I was 14. Um, and since that age, I, I've seen myself, I've seen a change in the way the, the young population work and how they, how they think. Because when I started volunteering, don't get me wrong, um, a, lot of, a lot of young people, not just Muslim young people, but just young people in general weren't interested in learning about certain issues or um, getting involved in volunteering. But I've seen a great shift in my in the, in their mindset. Um, so, peaceophobia. Um, there's a few themes at the moment, um, which are which are, which are cars, faith, and um, obviously Islam. Um, faith doesn't always mean religion to us. I feel like faith can be ha faith has many different meanings. Um, peaceophobia. The peaceophobia play itself has has different aspects of it that works well. So the the main idea was to ensure that the young Muslim men who are involved in, in the place, so Ali, Casper, Sahil, um, their voice is heard and that they can project to the audience that they are normal young Muslim men, despite the fact that they drive nice cars. And there's a lot of stigma around men at the moment who do drive nice cars. Um, a lot of them are educated. A lot of them have worked hard to drive those cars. And I feel like it's unfair to say that all men who drive nice cars are reckless or are rebels. Don't get me wrong, there are a few. Um, th there's always going to be a few who maybe paint the picture in a different l light, but we wanted to project the positive side, and that's what we've done through the characters. Now, um, the is Islam side of it, so the faith side of it, I really wanted... Um, the play to also project the fact that Islam does mean peace and now that message is it's portrayed in so many ways through different outlets so social media and um, so many other um, outlets it's it's the whole message has just it's completely wrong the way people are portrayed and as a young Muslim woman myself um, there was a time where I was like how am I supposed to show people that it's I'm a normal person, but also being a Muslim doesn't really stop you from doing things. Like I've done things um, that a lot of, maybe not a lot of young Muslim women would be able to do, but I've, I've done them because I've got the freedom to do them things. So for example, skydiving, um, that's something that, n not everyone's the same, but that's something that I've always wanted to do and I did it. Now that's not 
that just goes to show that we're not restricted in any way or any form and that's the main message we want wanted to highlight i hope that made sense <coughs> so there were so you mentioned um quite a lot of different themes that you've tried to pack into into yeah. the play um and obviously faith is is one of the the central ones mm -hmm. and i wanted to ask um imam as well um there are a few a few things in there that the characters talk about that people might not necessarily understand so this this concept of like whether you're practicing or you're not practicing or um you know sometimes they'll they'll, they'll say oh we'll, we'll recite the you know ayatul kursi for example um or we'll be talk they'll talk, they'll be talking about salah and, and prayers five times a day you know th those kinds of things um what could you explain a little bit about what those are in terms of um you know how muslims practice yeah, sure. I mean, just to add to what Ilum said, um, I think that, that you know, from an Islamic point of view, there's a lot of key, um, a lot of positive things that we can take out in terms, you know, from the themes of the show. Just from, um, you know, when you use a pun here, from the drive and passion, um, you know, that that the that the lads on the show that they show, um, their commitment to see a project through. Um, they talk about the fact that when they have a car show together, that. Um, you know, there's a sense of unity, a brotherhood, where they're willing to help out one another. Again, also another, um, you know, ethic which is, you know, found within Islam. And, you know, Islam allows for, um, you know, f for some of, uh, f for some of the blessings that God has bestowed you with. So, so in terms of, for example, finance, um, as long as it's a, you know, earned in a halal way, that it can be used for, you know, the material things of this world also. Um, as long as the you know the sadaka, the charity due is also given, so there's a lot of positives that can be taken from there. I mean, traditionally, you know, in terms of uh, you know the kitting up of the cars, traditionally, the you know the best camel was always sought or sought after. Um, you know, people always wanted to buy the fastest horse. So there's a lot of things that we can relate to tradition, um, and the fact that if you look at some of the you know the the problems and the challenges that the youth face here in Bradford particularly with the drug culture uh, and the, ga the gang culture that's there. I think it's something that can be positive, positively said regarding, the, you know, the lads that have taken up this particular habit, that, you know, in their own time, um, they've, you know, decided to exert their efforts in, you know, in something like this, in essentially striving to, you know, improve themselves um, and improve their cars, which also, again, um, will not, you know, is, is something that we can take from Islamic ethics as well. But they do mention here yeah, that there's certain customs that they do um, that they do practice. So, for example, one of the lads says that he recites the Ayatul Kursi um, before embarking on the journey. Now, the Ayatul Kursi is a verse is regarded as the greatest verse, in fact, from the Holy Quran, which is the Islamic um, book, um, the Islamic sacred book, and it is a verse which is commonly recited for blessings. Uh, it is also recited for protection. And it's something that is taught at a very young age. So kids, you know, m maybe they're as young as five or six, will begin to learn this and memorize this off by heart. And it'll be something that will be commonly recited, um, mainly on a, on a daily basis. And uh, coming to Salah, so Salah is, um, after belief, is the second pillar of Islam uh, and the second most important pillar of Islam. It's the time when a Muslim dedicates, you know, five times throughout the day, um, uh, you know, through an act of love and devotion to show uh, thankfulness uh, and his gratitude to God for all the blessings that God has bestowed upon them. But it gives them a time to reflect throughout the day as well. It's an opportunity to ask God for, for his uh, forgiveness for any shortcomings that have happened in between those times as well. Um, it's very central to every single Muslim's life. Thank you. And how important is it to show those kinds of uh, th those practices and um, and what a Muslim would typically do, in, you know, day to day. How important is it to show that in, in th things like this? So, as a Muslim, we believe uh, in the concept of an akhirah, which is an afterlife. And in regards to the afterlife, God says that there will be a, a day of judgment, a day when we will be accountable for our deeds. And God mentions in the Quran that on that day, anyone who's done even an atom's worth of good will see that. So this idea of practice is something which is very important within Islam uh, to attain, you know, those good deeds, so that when you're standing, bef you know, before your Lord, that you're able to stand in a manner where He'll be pleased with you. But also, the Prophet peace be upon him mentioned that the best of actions are those which are continuous. So um, a again, it's a process, um, and continually Muslims, you know, will aim to strive throughout their lives 
um, bettering themselves with each practice as they go along. Yeah, so they're, they're incredibly important and, and they are something that would be almost like the bread and butter of, of, of what a, a, a Muslim would, would, would do. Um, and I guess, Iram, my, my question following on from that was how important was it for you to include those in the play itself um, and, and, and showcase them? Yeah, so as I mentioned before, it was um, really important to include them because not only do we want to show the culture of Bradford, but also the fact that we are normal young people who are just trying to do our best and um, educate ourselves in a way that's actually going to benefit society and contribute, as um, Imam said, contribute positively to our society. Um, I myself, we, uh, the religion itself follows the teachings of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the main one of the, uh, the main sunnahs is to ensure that young people um, are able to contribute positively and as a young Muslim I feel proud of myself but also proud of everyone else around me who's contributing so that's why um, it's really important that we include such issues and we showcase these issues because if we don't do it then no one else will and we are the future generation um, and yeah that's that's why I feel like it's important. Yeah, um, and, and I think also from a spectator si side of things as well, uh, often the only time you see Muslim practice or, um, or like particular terms, uh, you'll see them in headlines related to like really, really negative things. So like mm -hmm. acts of terrorism, for example, or, um, or they'll be in films, uh, you know, th around those kinds of issues. So just seeing them in a normal setting um, as an everyday thing that young people are in involved in, I think it kind of, it really helps to break down some of those stereotypes and, and those negative associations that people will have, because you're go, you know you're taking this this play to Manchester to lots of other places, and you know you want people to be able to 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 know exactly how it is that that that, that Muslims kind of go about their their daily lives, young Muslims in in particular, um, and so just to kind of go over uh, maybe some challenges, um, I, I wanted to ask what you think or what are the main challenges that you've experienced as, as a young Muslim um, in Bradford or, or beyond as far as leads uh, as, as Imam maybe can, can, can tell us? In terms of the challenges I think so some of the challenges that youth face um, are some of the you know challenges that are common to all youth um, <coughs> Muslim or non-Muslim so whether that be access to education um, you know opportunities job opportunities security and so forth but as far as Muslims are concerned, you know, we are one Ummah as well. And, you know, when something happens on the other side of the world, um, you know, it's something that concerns us that we are, you know, that we are very concerned about. So I think, you know, when Muslim leaders don't, um, you know, raise, raise, raise the voice and raise the flag for, for the Muslim youth as well, then Muslims, um, particularly the youth, become disenfranchised uh, as a result of that. You know, th there's always uh, a lot of noise about, um, how how the press should be free, but if the press is also you know giving out misconceptions after misconceptions, um, then it, you know it becomes very difficult for Muslims, um, particularly for the youth. Uh, I think that's where peace phobia goes you know a long way to fill that void, um, and to you know wrong some of those right sorry to right some of those wrongs. Yeah, and Aram, um, I think I would say as the Imam said, um, issues that are going on around the world. For example, the issue that's going on in, in Palestine right now, um, I've seen a lot of young Muslims actually step up and step up their game and attend um, attend protests and actually spread the message of what's going on. And that for me was a really positive thing to see um, because it shows that we do have a voice and that we can be heard. So. I think the main issue is just trying to be heard and trying to be fit in, trying to fit in as well. Yeah. And what what advice would you both have uh, to give to young people, for example, fellow young people or young people that you meet on a on a day to day basis um, who are worried about these kinds of things, who feel like they don't have a voice? Um, how can they get involved and, and, and what can they do? I think the main advice I would give us would be to step out of your comfort zone, try doing new things, um, meet new people and just ne have a network of supportive people who are going to push you in the right direction and not um, and not push you in the wrong direction. And even if you make mistakes, it's normal, like we're all growing up, like I'm, no one's perfect at all. Um, 
so making mistakes is part of life and just just kind of be headstrong and carry on doing what you're doing if you're doing something positive and if you feel like you want to make a change in your life there's so many ways to do that um so thank you um imam yeah i think um from an islamic point of view um again there'll be um you know a, a variety of solutions i'm sure that you'll find um you know of opinions i should say um of people who were given you know in in, term, in terms of this personally i feel that you know events like these should you know they, they act as an opportunity for us to possibly turn back to the quran and sunnah um i think you know individual and probably collective thought by us probably would be probably would be a good start um traditionally whenever trials and tribulations came to mankind the the believers n- you know always considered them um due to you know facing those issues were due to the disobedience that they were shown towards god so i think f- god mentions the quran also that you know he doesn't change a nation until that nation changes themselves so the first change needs to come from within you know individually then after that i think education is important so we find that a lot of people they react um but without actually having any sense of why is that they are reacting so you know understanding what is the issue the history behind it i think is 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 crucial um and then once you've gained that understanding then the prophetic prin- principle is that the prophet peace be upon him said that whenever you see something whenever you see a wrong then those who are able to stop it by the hand should stop it by the hand those who are unable to do that stop it by the tongue and if you're unable to do that then have at least some hatred for it in the heart right think ill of it in the heart so depending on whatever um opportunity there is for you you know be the one who either stops it physically with the hand or at least inform others about it um and if not then you know the minimum you can do is make dua uh, for those that are being oppressed and um and i think uh iram just to go back to you about about the play and and the project how do you think that that's going to help um some of these challenges that the young people are facing um and and what do you hope for for it to do in future yeah so i the main thing i hope for the play to do is to actually bring people together um different types of people but also educate people in in a way where, where they don't realize they're actually being educated so for example plays are not always plays always give out different messages and when a person says they're going to attend a play or watch a play they don't have that idea in the head that oh I'm going to go learn something new like you go to school and you're like oh I'm going to go open that book and um, I need to revise this I want it to be done in a creative way and um that's why we decided to to start planning the play in the first place but um yeah I do I do want the message of message that young people especially young muslim people um are trying their best to 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 do their best but also be the best versions of themselves um and that's that's the main message i want i want to want to be portrayed yeah cuz one thing that you also mentioned as well was stigma mm-hmm. and um and i think in particular a lot of young muslim asian working class boys and men i think are probably um like one of the if you think about Bradford one of the demographics that often gets a lot of um it gets talked about quite a bit mm-hmm. um and even if you know that there was a a newspaper article that i just saw this morning um that talked about no go areas and you know these um i think even in 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 one headline it said taliban like and you know these kinds of uh that th- that kind of terminology when how ha- how do you as a as a young person kind of look at that and uh, and channel your your work and your frustration maybe at that into things like pisophobia what 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 do you do so first of all what i what i try not to do is to not rush into things but also think logically how can i actually help someone and how can i present the message in a way where number one i'm not going to be portrayed as a certain person or as as a lot of people are portrayed as an extremist um number 2 how can i help someone or how can i showcase a message when i can actually do something about it so how can how can i make change instead of just talking about it um and that's how that's how we have like th- that's how we started with the play and that's how, that's why we have the different events that we have at speakers corner um 
but yeah that that's what I think I think the main thing is not to rush into anything and when you hear headlines and when you read the he- the articles it's it's not good to just rush into making a decision that you you're going to regret later on because we have to be careful especially in today's society and today's day and age so there there is some responsibility yeah, as well of, i feel like we have a lot of responsibility even with the play um because we wanted to factor in the the islamic values that a person has it was very hard because we're not we're not, we're not all imams and we we don't have a lot of knowledge but we want to learn and we want to educate ourselves um in a way where we can we can portray the message in the right way and not show something that's not true. So I think that was one of the obstacles, um, but we worked around it and I feel like um, getting different people involved and um, having different insights with the planning, it helped a lot. Yeah, thank you. Um, Imam, any final comments on um, on what's been said, but just in relation to stigma and how young people ch- channel you know, what they see into um, things like pedophobia. Yeah, so um, I think just to add to what Idam said, um, in in the in the history of Islam, Islamic theologians and scholars have never been one, you know, have never been shy to um, to to counter those who are pointing fingers at Islam, um, and to you know basically get rid of some of the mis- misconceptions that are out there. Um, so again, education is key. I think at every at every element, education is key. Yeah, I think if if I remember correctly, that the, it's it's a verse of the Quran. I'm just in two minds about this hadith of the Quran, but I'm pretty sure it's the ayah of the Quran, where it mentions that Udu ila sabili rabbik bil hikmah, that you should invite to the way of your Lord uh, through wisdom. And so, in the modern day, um, you know, particularly with all the challenges that are out there, um, especially in a place like Bradford, where literacy um, and education is not, you know, is is different. Um, unfortunately, is is below par compared to, you know, other areas within the country. We do need to start thinking out of the box, you know, in 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 passing on the message, in educating people, um, in explaining, you know, that Islam is peaceful. So I think peace, you know, peaceophobia is again is part of the hikmah. Um, in that, it's not everyone is able to get, you know, information or understanding from textbook these days. But, you know, more and more you'll find that the youth are taking their information from online, from social media and so forth. So projects like these definitely will go a long way um, in, uh, you know, in helping people get an understanding um, of what Islam is actually about. Thank you, bro. Thank you so much.